This painting, if it was perfect and pristine, would be upwards of $10,000. Hi, Gary Germer here, the antique appraiser extraordinaire here in Portland, Oregon. And I want to do a little show and tell video with you here today. We're going to talk to you about this painting that's right behind me and talk to you about why it's valuable, why it's not valuable, and talk about the style, the color, and, and the time period and provenance that makes it what it is today. So come with me and let's look at this painting. This painting came out of a local Portland, Oregon estate and uh, the family had had it in storage and they brought it in, uh, they liked it, it had been a grandmother's piece, they didn't know a lot about it and wanted to get kind of a value in the idea of perhaps selling it. And I wanted to talk about this because it has a lot of interesting things going for it and going against it so we show you how our thought process goes to figure out what something's worth. This particular painting is done by an artist named Louis Betts. Now Louis Betts was a, a portrait artist in New York City at the turn of the century in the early 20th century and it built up quite a reputation and part of it based on this painting alone. And this, is, this particular painting helped really establish him even further among the wealthy people in uh, New York at the time. It's called the Apple Blossom or Apple Blossom Girl. We don't know exactly who she is but of course with the hair, the hat and, and the dress on we can see why they came up with that title. And the Friends of the Art had purchased her for the uh, Chicago Art Museum where she hung for many years until after World War II where she was deaccessioned and sold and purchased by the grandfather of, of my client who currently owns this. Um, she was then in the last 20 years has spent her life in storage and they've just came out, uh, been uncovering the storage unit and bringing out some of the artwork that they had. And this was one of them, and they didn't know quite what to do with her or that much history on her. So this really has one other interesting story when I was researching her about Betts, is that um, his younger brother was also a painter. And this painting, of course, caused a lot of interest, a lot of stir because it was so well done, that his younger brother forged it, painted another one, and sold it to a wealthy attorney in Chicago who wanted one. Well, the brother found out about this and sued his younger brother, and he had to get the painting back, and in the lawyer's office, when he's giving the painting, the fake painting back, the sister-in-law, the wife of Louis Betts, handed his, her brother-in-law a knife and made him cut it to ribbons. And he says, there, I hope you're happy. And she took a piece, tore it off, and threw it at him, and said, if you can't paint your own paintings, you should just go ahead and paint signs. And this was, <laughs> this is the wonder of the internet. It was a, from an article in the New York Times in, in 1910. So this has an interesting history to it and a fun history to it. So we look at that as far as figuring out what is it worth. Well, it's a well-known artist who did portraits from New York. So that adds a lot of interest to it. A lot, the idea of that she's a beautiful young girl, and I've always used this as a, as a broad brush to paint with, but usually paintings of beautiful young girls bring a lot more money than paintings of funny looking old men. And so because she's a beautiful girl, uh, that adds some interest to her. This girl has uh, all the colors she needs, pinks, whites, tans. She has a nice light palette which uh, it speaks to today's decorating and is almost timeless in that way. A lot of portraits of the period were, were, of when she was originally done were very dark and very heavy. This has a real light palette. And so that adds to the value and the interest because it adds to the desirability of the painting. The subject matter also of being a young girl for a portrait. Portraits generally are not as collected as say landscapes and other forms of art are, although there are people that's strictly what they do look for. When you're also looking at one of the problems we have with this is the damage on this painting. And probably one of the reasons it was had a deaccession is that it probably got damaged in storage. And there if you it's been relined and so that it means that the paint was, was had issues and they pulled the paint back on. And you under black light you can see in through here and in through here where there's actually been uh, over painting that has been done in order to fill in the painting that was there. Um, and they've done a good job. I think she's fine. But you have to take that into consideration that a collector, much like collecting a car, wants one that's pristine, original, like it's been garaged. 
they uh, want a painting that's as original as possible as well. You'll also see here, there's a chips here and here and up here that have been done recently, I think since it's been in storage in the last 20 years. Those aren't as big of a problem. A lot of people really worry about that. Those can be touched up by a professional for not as much money as you probably think. So that doesn't really affect the value dramatically. Uh, and, but those, that, those are issues of condition and that's what does bring the value down is the overall repair work that's been done to it. Uh, because of the restoration, I devalue it quite a bit and I figure it's worth about a third of that, probably $2,500, $3,500 range in today's market considering you're going to have to put a little bit more money into touching up what's there. Still a nice painting. If it wasn't Betts, if it was just a nice painting, we don't know who the girl is, we, don't know the, if we didn't know who the artist was, we didn't have the backstory. I would say it's worth maybe eight to twelve hundred dollars. So the story and the history can really bring up the value. But I thought this was fun. I thought she was a pretty girl, and we're going to get her touched up, and we're going to find a good home for her. Those are some of the things we have coming in. I'll be doing some more videos about things we have coming in, also answering questions that people have been sending in to us about uh, collecting, about repairing, and and cleaning and that sort of thing. So check back regularly with us. We'll be sending them out regularly. We'll be sending you notices if you subscribe. We'll send you notice when we have a new video come out. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.